right? George Michael songs. A lot of people still dealing with that shock and sadness of his death. I think it's, yeah, Ross, I think it's. Are they back on the road? No, no. <laughs> Although he is on a reality TV show in England. Is that right? Matt, Matt Gossett? Matt is, yeah. Really? George Michael gained immense popularity in the world of music, which transformed him from an ordinary Londoner to a globally famous pop star. With his incredible songwriting skills, he wrote and sang songs that touched the hearts of millions. Not to forget his greatest hit, the Christmas classics. However, his journey wasn't just all highs. Behind the scenes, he struggled with many personal battles too. In this video, let us take you through the roller coaster life of George Michael, the man who truly transformed the world of pop music, and find out what caused his sudden death. Early life and love for music. The legendary musician George Michael was born on June 25, 1963, in East Finchley, London, England. His Greek father, Kyriakos Jack Panayotou, was a restaurateur, and his English mother, Leslie Angold, was a dancer. Growing up in a rich cultural environment turned out to be very valuable for him. The Jewish background of his maternal grandmother, which was kept under wraps during World War II, added additional depth to his convoluted childhood. George was enrolled at Roe Green Junior School in Kingsbury High School from the beginning. It was during his time at this school that he became passionate about music. Hence, he decided to explore the world of tunes and rhythms that would eventually become a part of his identity. During high school, he discovered a kindred spirit in new student Andrew Ridgely, who was also into pop music. Michael and Ridgely both had opposite personalities, but this didn't hinder them from becoming best buddies. They both existed as a single music duo making waves in the music industry. But I think in terms of, I think it has to be said, many, many long surviving relationships. The beginning of Michael's musical career. Michael started playing the guitar on the outskirts and in the London underground stations. Commuters who enjoyed his music would often sing along. He then started working at the Bel Air restaurant in Northwood, London, spent the time DJing at local clubs, and played at school and club performances in Bushy, Stanmore, and Watford. The assembling led to the formation of a pop-up ska band with Ridgely and other members. Despite its brevity, the band laid the groundwork for Michael's future endeavors, setting the stage for the iconic duo that would define his career. George Michael's youth involved a deep attachment to music that was influenced by his multi-ethnic roots, and the interests oriented to it were shared with longtime friends. His incredible voyage in the music industry that originated in London paved the way to international stardom and surely demonstrated what you can achieve by pursuing your dream with passion and hard work. To maintain my courage in situations where my sexuality could get in the way. Musical Journey with the Wham. In the early 1980s, it is clear that the music scene was bursting with variety and progress. With this as a backdrop, two high school undergrads, Michael and Ridgely, started a revolution that reshaped the pop music genre. When their ska band failed to gain fame, they rebranded themselves as Wham!, by changing their name, they demonstrated their readiness to embrace new beginnings with heightened self-confidence and a new life. Their first album, called Fantastic, instantly conquered listeners in the UK with its energetic sound, which stirred the hearts of music lovers all across the country. Through Young Gun's catchy hooks to Wham Rap's socially conscious message, the album displayed the duo's true talent. As Wham gained popularity, it was obvious that Michael was a star. Embracing his newly gained identity, he legally changed his name to George Michael. Along with Ridgely, George Michael remained the frontman of Wham. It started topping the charts and gathering a very large number of female teenage fans. Their second album, Make It Big, propelled them even higher than before, making them the number one pop band. Michael soon reached number one on the charts in the USA. Smash hits like Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go and Everything She Wants. Wake me up before you go -go. became the major chord of the era, thus making Wham! an international sensation. However, it was the old-fashioned Careless Whisper song that demonstrated him as a capable singer and songwriter, attaining him praise and world acknowledgement. In 1984, they teamed up with the charity Band-Aid to record a special holiday song, Do They Know It's Christmas? which was intended to raise money to help with Ethiopian famine relief. Their classy holiday single, Last Christmas, made even more contributions to their charitable endeavor. The phenomenon of Wham! went far deeper than music. In April 1985, 
they achieved the status of the first Western pop group to appear in China, making crowds spellbound with their breathtaking performances. As a result of their concert tour in China, the world learned about the power of music in bringing people of different backgrounds together. However, the duo parted ways in 1986, releasing a goodbye single, Edge of Heaven, followed by a concert at Wembley Stadium, the announcement of his solo career. In early 1987, George Michael ventured into his solo career with a duet with Aretha Franklin titled I Knew You Were Waiting For Me that topped the US Billboard and the UK singles charts immediately. This was their third consecutive single award in the top position in the United Kingdom. Though he didn't compose the song himself, his version of it was highly praised, and he earned a Grammy Award for Best R&B Performance by a duo or group with vocal in 1988. Faith, which was released in late 1987, was the first solo album of George Michael. The first single, I Want Your Sex, was banned on many UK and US radio stations due to its erotic language. He had another song that peaked at number two on the US Billboard Hot 100, as well as charted at number three in the UK. The second single, Faith, was another massive hit for Michael and one of his most iconic songs. It topped the charts all over the world and earned him accolades and a huge fan base. Faith album, released in October 1987, was on the top of the UK Albums chart. It stayed for 51 non-consecutive weeks in the top 10 of the Billboard 200 in the USA. It also had 12 weeks at number one. Songs like Father Figure One More Try and Monkey scored number one too. The record became Rye AA Diamond Certified, which means sales of over 10 million copies in the US and over 25 million globally. Critics of the album Faith hailed it as a pop and rock masterpiece. Everyone passionately praised Michael for his songwriting and ability to touch the audience. Subsequently, George Michael started doing a world tour in 1988. The tour became the top-grossing event of the year, with total revenues amounting to $17.7 million. His success earned him two Brit Awards for Best British Artist and the 1989 Grammy Award for the category Album of the Year for Faith. MTV continued to acknowledge Michael's significant contribution to music by presenting him with the Video Vanguard Award in 1989. Although he became a superstar in a very short time, George Michael had to face the pressures of the celebrity lifestyle and the emotional exhaustion of endless promotion of his tours, like all the other singers and musicians in the industry. In the 90s era, Michael released Listen Without Prejudice Volume 1 in September 1990. The album broke all the records of sales as it became the bestseller of all time in music history. Shattered ended at number one on the UK albums charts, and at the same time, it reached the highest place on the UK singles charts and stayed on the US Billboard 200 chart for two weeks. During this streak, Michael's decision to decline offers to perform live did not have much of a negative effect on the success of his singles. Praying for Time, in fact, hit number one on the US Billboard Hot 100 and stayed at the top of the UK chart as well. The song's lyrics talked about contemporary problems and made a huge impact on audiences from all across the globe. This was one of the reasons behind the song being so famous. The second single, Waiting for That Day, demonstrated the songwriter's ability to use acoustic melodies. The tune was appreciated not only by the audience, but by the critics as well. The Freedom 90 was the main representative of this album, mostly because of its simple melody and the music video that was created by David Fincher. The fact that Michael chose not to appear in the music video, but all major models lip-sync to his music, and the film's characters lip-sync, shows his boldness. Despite this fact, Freedom 90 also achieved a lot of success by touching the top of the charts. The song was number 13 on Billboard's Hot 100 charts in the US. The song's follow-up, Let's Dance, also reached number 8 on the UK singles chart. And time stands still before me. A whopping 28 of his tracks peaked at number 1 on the UK singles chart. In the year 1991, George Michael went on a tour named Cover to Cover, during which he played his fruitful cover songs in Japan, Britain, the US, and Brazil. Therefore, this ensemble's duet version of Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me became the number one in the UK and the USA country. Furthermore, in 2009, Michael also released his autobiographical book which is titled Bear, which chronicles all the different aspects of his personal and professional experiences. Unfortunately, the closure of the tour led to the downfall of the Listen Without Prejudice Volume 2 project. 
but it also messed up a court case initiated by Michael against Sony Music. His participation in charity concerts like Red Hot Plus Dance was dedicated to increasing awareness and fundraising for the fight against the AIDS scourge. The sub-single Too Funky also stayed in the race and grabbed numbers 4 and 5 in the UK appearing on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. In 1992, George Michael joined Queen for the Freddie Mercury tribute concert, in which he delivered a peerless rendition of Somebody to Love, which was seen as one of his best performances. The outcome of this collaboration was Five Live EP, which included live studio recordings from the concert, and which, in turn, contributed to the Mercury Phoenix Trust's cause. As the trial was over, Michael emerged back into the limelight and staged Jesus to a Child at MTV Europe Music Awards in 1994. The tender back ballad Jesus to a Child, which was dedicated to his late lover Anselmo Filippa, was the 1996 hit that skyrocketed his popularity across the globe. In 1996, George Michael came out with Fast Love, the vibrant track which centers around passion and fulfillment. The digital video done nicely came with the song's energetic beat, and thus it was number one on the UK singles chart and number eight on the Billboard Hot 100 in the USA. This triumph was followed by the launch of his third studio album, Older, which generated six singles from the UK, climbing to hit number three chart positions in a period of two years. The compilation album, Ladies and Gentlemen, The Best of George Michael, 1998, was shown with his extensive list of treats. The album topped the UK Albums chart for eight weeks and soon became one of his best-selling albums, which ultimately cemented his iconic status. It is worth noticing that the single release, Outside, mocked his arrest for solicitation of a police officer, and even the duet with Mary J. Blige as presented his broad spectrum of artistry. In 1999, George Michael released Songs from the Last Century, a collection of cover tracks that turned out to be the evidence of his stunning interpretations of classics. Despite achieving limited success, the album was notable for demonstrating that Michael's talent and creativity as a musician were lasting. Beginning of the New Millennium during the 2000s, George Michael still topped music charts by collaborating with well-known artists and dashing off politically relevant songs. In 2000, he joined hands with Whitney Houston to deliver another great single, If I Told You That, which was an addition to his list of potential as a producer. Thus, Michael's solo achievements started to receive recognition. His song, Freak, turned into a top 10 hit in the UK and set the stage for his future success. On the other hand, it was just one month later when the most controversial song was released, and this song by Michael went by the name of Shoot the Dog. The song's video had Tony Blair as George Bush's lapdog, which hinted at the direction and critiqued the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003. Even though the song received mixed reviews, it reached number one. Michael topped the Denmark chart and got among the top five in most European countries. This showed that Michael was ready to follow his love for singing and also to utilize his platform to make a change in the world. On February 15, 2003, George Michael covered the song The Grave by Don McLean, which was done as a protest against the upcoming Iraq War. He performed the song on a number of TV shows, including Top of the Pops. This was his first appearance on this legendary studio program since his debut back in the 70s. Hence, Michael was seen as an artist who was not afraid to voice his opinion even against the political leaders in war, and therefore, he gained respect from the public. Michael was seen as a fearless artist who easily spoke his mind. In 2004, his next studio album, Patience, brought universal acceptance to his audience and critics. This pop gem took first place on the UK Albums Chart, the album's success was mainly driven by songs like Amazing, a European chart topper, and Flawless, a dance hit that occupied the first row in the charts all over Europe. His fifth studio album, 25, commemorating his 25-year career, was released on November 2006. The album made its opening debut in first place. Besides his musical exploits, Michael was featured in several TV shows as well, such as his American debut role on Eli Stone as a guardian angel. The plot of the show bears a strong resemblance to the allegorical meaning of the messenger of God. 
In the year 2006, George Michael kicked off his tour called 25 Live, and it managed to gather crowds all through Europe and North America. He convincingly vouched for himself by his performance at the brand new Wembley Stadium in London in 2007, and eventually got engraved with the status of the music star. Throughout his career, George Michal proved to be a very successful singer, but at the same time, he didn't stop the process of self-perfection and acknowledged the need for experimentation by the emission of new sounds and images. His concluding spectacular run on American Idol in 2008, with Praying for Time on the finale, still leaves him as the standard bearer for ageless talent and unquestionable popularity. 2010 Concert Tour and More Success the year 2010 was marked by the concert tour to Australia by George Michael, highlighting the success the artist achieved over more than two decades. The artist had his best reception at the Burrswood Dome in Perth. It was amazing to see 15,000 people attending the show, which proved that his performance and appeal had no boundaries. Moreover, Michael participated in charity by providing backing vocals for a re-recording of True Faith by New Order to raise funds for the UK Telethon comic relief. On top of that, he acted in carpool karaoke with one of the sketches featured in a comic relief. The two of them serenaded the commuters across the streets of London. On April 2011, George Michael decided to make You and I, originally by Stevie Wonder, a gift to Prince William and Catherine Middleton on the occasion of their wedding as a sign of good wishes. Although they were available for download at no charge, Michael encouraged fans to help Prince William and Miss Catherine Middleton charitable gift fund by donating to show his involvement with society and generosity toward charitable causes. The Symphonica tour began in Prague, Czech Republic, State Opera House on August 2011. It served as a chance to showcase his artistic talent through the orchestral arrangements of his hits. Nevertheless, the tour was canceled in Vienna, Austria, after he became ill with pneumonia and soon fell into a coma. Despite the health issues, Michael attended the 2012 Brit Awards, showing his tenacity and the lasting effect he has on the music industry. All my seem to fade to black and white. Later on, he announced the continuation of the Symphonica tour, which concluded with the farewell concert at Earl Court in London on October 2012. The tour indicated Michal's genius and won the hearts of people all over the world. When Michael finally came out with Symphonica, which was his seventh solo album, in March 2014, the album was clear evidence that he was as powerful and relevant as he had always been. Later on, his name became immortal through posthumous projects and collaborations. A documentary called Freedom, dedicated to his rise to fame, outstanding career and personal exploits, was set to be released. As proof of his everlasting popularity, George Michael's melodious holiday number no. one, Last Christmas, hit that number no. one spot on the UK single chart on New Year's Day, 2021, 36 years after its initial release. The fan base proved the timelessness and vitality of Michael's songs. It changed him into a music icon who was above time. Personal life and controversy. George Michael's personal life involved rumors as well as some of his own public confessions. In June 1998, he got a lot of negative publicity after was arrested for the perpetration of lewd acts on a plainclothes undercover police officer in a public park in West Hollywood, Los Angeles County, California. The singer later described a feeling that he'd been deliberately trapped by the incident, and it led to George Michael publicly coming out. Being himself, contrary to what one might think, was not an easy task for Michael. He talked about his early fantasies, which were all about women. The fact that these fantasies led him to believe that he was a he initially. For a while though, he told himself he was only doing this as a reaction to his unhealthy obsession that was created by his environment. Michael had disclosed his bisexual to his close friends and family, yet he had been struggling to live openly as a homosexual person before he began his relationship with a man. Throughout his life, Michael never denied himself the company of both men and women. The fact that he had an affair with a makeup artist by the name of Kathy Jung in the late 1980s can be a bit confusing. However, she was the most important woman in his life at that particular time and even performed in his I Want Your As Michael described it, she had been his only real-life girlfriend so far. The summer of 1992 saw Michael begin a romantic relationship with Anselmo Filepa, a Brazil-based fashion designer whom he met during the well-known Rock in Rio concert. 
Heartbreakingly, Philippa found out he was HIV positive six months into their romance, and later, in 1993, he fell victim to an AIDS-related brain hemorrhage, which became the cause of his death. Jesus to a Child, sung by Michael in his album Older, was in memory of Philippa, clearly showing Michael's deep sentimental attachment to the relationship. Then Michael got into a long-term partnership with Kenny Goss, who had been a flight attendant and sportswear officer in the past. They owned many homes all around, including Dallas, Oxfordshire, and North London. They were supposed to put the last touch on their relationship and tie the knot by registering it as a civil partnership. But in 2011, unfortunately, they went their separate ways. In 2012, following his separation, Michael geared up to begin a romantic relationship with a friend and colleague, Fadi Fawaz, who was a celebrity hairstylist and photographer. Down the road of his life, George Michael had to deal with being in the spotlight and trying to discover his personal self. His being able to frankly talk about his sex and his endeavor to love and to be loved would continue to make a mark in the hearts and minds of countless fans. Battling with health issues. From the initial days of his career, George Michael's lifespan was scarred by a series of health problems primarily associated with drugs. He spent most of his career with a dependency on drugs and repeatedly had to overcome this relapse. It was back in 2006 when his problem became worse and he went to jail for possession. This was followed by recurring relapses and multiple arrests. Michael openly admitted that smoking a lot of weed was one huge issue for him, reassuring his audience that he was planning to smoke less of it. Regardless of his best efforts to discipline himself, he unambiguously informed the nurse that he smoked up to a gram's worth of cannabis every day, and often more, implying the depth of his addiction. Moreover, he was also dependent on sleeping pills. His substance abuse played a huge role in his inability to regain both his mental and physical health, which led to many serious medical problems. In October of 2011, one serious health problem revealed itself when Michael suddenly dropped out of the Royal Albert Hall concert in London due to a viral infection. Within a month of that, he was rushed to Vienna General Hospital after experiencing stabbing chest pains. Then it was revealed that he had caught pneumonia. Thus, his condition worsened quickly. Michael was put in the critical care department and one time got into a coma. He underwent a tracheostomy to aid his recovery and later expressed feeling indebted to the hospital staff for the same. Nevertheless, the event impacted him with a temporary defect of speech, the West Country accent, for example, which posed the issue of the foreign accent syndrome too. One more alarming accident occurred on May 2013 after he encountered a head injury when he fell from his moving car on the M1 motorway. He was flown to the hospital, and his superficial injuries were treated luckily. This was another instance in his life where he was awakened to the consequences of his life decisions and drug dependence. In spite of his relapse, Michael began to mend the gaps in his life and started looking for a solution to his addiction. But unfortunately, on June 2015, he was again admitted to a rehabilitation center in Switzerland. The Tragic Death George Michael, the pop singer superstar, left the world on December 25, 2016, when he was only 53. His death deeply moved the world of music and impacted fans all over the globe. Michael was found dead at his residence in Goring-on-Thames, Oxfordshire, England, by his partner, Fadi Fawaz. When Michael's untimely demise became known to the public, out of shock, a stream of tributes gushed from fans, friends, and fellow musicians. First, the reality of how Michael died became the focus. Many stories circulated as people struggled to understand the cause. An autopsy done in the days subsequent to his death generated barely legible results. Thus, the police officers probed further into the matter. Although the autopsy did not prove that Michael had suffered any trauma or had poison in his system, it showed that there were pre-existing conditions of heart and liver concerns that led to his death. The cause of death was officially attributed to cardiac dysfunction with cardiomyopathy and fatty liver. Dilated cardiomyopathy refers to the enlargement of the left ventricle with the weakening of muscle function, causing heart failure. Fatty liver, which means accumulation of fat in the liver, can be due to various reasons like alcoholism, obesity, and diabetes. Tragically, Michael's death intensified in the media space, but the love and support overcame other controversies. Others asked whether his past issues with drug abuse could be the reason behind his passing mentioning his hardship with drug use and legalities. Nevertheless, Michael's family and friends remained tight-lipped, 
Despite the barrage of rumors and speculation, they chose to honor the memory and the history of their fallen hero. The real cause of Michael's death was eventually established, bringing relief to his family, friends and fans, and putting an end to the gossip. It was stated that Michael passed from natural causes. This put an end to the debate regarding Michael's death being intentional or accidental. After the news of his death broke, his fans gathered outside his former home at the Grove Highgate, making it a memorial garden. Over the following months, the tributes to him kept piling up. Elton John in Las Vegas emotionally touched the crowd and praised Michael not only as an incredible singer and songwriter, but also as an amazing man with the kindest soul he had ever known. Before the 59th annual Grammy Awards, Adele honored him with a mournful rendition of Fast Love. Chris Martin from Coldplay held Michael in high regard, relaying heartfelt apologies at the 2017 Brit Awards with the live version of A Different Corner. Furthermore, in March 2019, Michael's art collection was sold in England via an auction, and the collected proceeds were channeled to various philanthropic organizations, including those he used to support during his lifetime. In 2020, Michael's hometown of Brent remembered him with a mural for the occasion of the Brent Biennial. It celebrated Michael as a pioneer of underground arts and earlier culture of the LGBTQ community. Solo artist Don Meller also presented a vignette to honor Michael's contributions. In 2023, Michael was posted long after his passing at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, thereby bagging his position as one of the music legends of all time. The UK Royal Mint unveiled a collector's coin in honor of the iconic musician, featuring a silhouette of Michael sporting his famous sunglasses on February 2024, thus sealing his legacy forever. During his songwriting and singing career, he inevitably got many awards and titles, such as Brit Awards, MTV Video Music Awards, Ivor Novello Awards, American Music Awards, and Grammy Awards. Further, he was quite prominent on the music ladder when he was honored by Billboard and Smooth Radio as one of the great musical artists of all time. His efforts as a philanthropist and many charities he had made anonymously revealed his empathy and kindness, as he wanted to make the world a better place. His death is indeed a tragic event in the history of music. Even though he is gone, his legacy is still present through his songs, which motivate future generations. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned for more exciting ones.